Hey gun people. We're gonna do a couple of uh I'll do a couple crazy cop stories here. Uh, so <clears throat> work on auto theft. Am I in this damn picture? Well I can't see nothing on that thing. Alright, I think I'm in a picture. <laughs> hey Moki! <laughs> um so we're doing this auto theft. And we get a case of a report of a stolen vehicle at somebody's garage. And the cops who arrive say, Hi, Moki. Hi, you two people. So the cops who arrive whew, say, Hey, we think you guys ought to come here. We got a clue. So we're in the area. We're working. The cops are like, Hey, man, if we can turn this over to the auto theft guys, then we ain't got to take a report. We'll let them know with it. We got to work the streets. We got to work the beat. You know, the uniform cops are responsible for the beat, so when they get into a big case that requires a lot of investigation, they don't really want to get involved in it. Because if they do, then the sergeant's kind of nagging at them, why are you neglecting your beat? Other people are having to cover your calls. Uh, you're not having beat integrity. You're milking this call. You're trying to do all this. I think it's good police work. I don't think sergeants ought to be doing that, but that's the way it is. So they call us to, to turn over this case as auto theft. Somebody went in a garage and stole this guy's engine and his car out of his garage. So we get there, and you'd be surprised how many times this happens. <laughs> There's where, where, they, where they pulled the engine out or, or broke something or did something, there was an oil drag. And right down the middle of the street it goes. And it goes for a long way. And the cops are like, dude, we want to kind of follow this, but we don't want to get in a bucket. It's probably going to be a stolen vehicle. You guys can take it. If you guys want it, you can have it need any help call us we're like all right we'll take it so we go to the call we go there we talk to the guy we get all the information about the car and the engine also so we start following the oil trail <laughs> it goes down the street around two turns it starts getting less and less drip 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 toward the end it's kind of fading out but the drips lead right up to a stinking driveway <laughs> so we're like dude it can't be this freaking easy <laughs> This guy can't be that stupid. He stole from his neighbor and just drove it like around the block or two blocks away. So it's in there. So, of course, we look through the window. <laughs> it's got a lot of windows. We look in there. We go, shit, that looks like our car. <laughs> so we knock on the door. We hear scurrying around. Nobody answers. <laughs> We're like, okay, there's somebody in the house. They don't want to answer. We see the car. We go, okay. So here's where... Another case of exigency that we could have probably kicked the door in. But we didn't. We're like, they ain't hiding the car. We got the car in the garage. We're in no stinking hurry. If they don't open the door, we'll secure the house, go get a damn warrant. No problem. So we go get a warrant. We secure the house. We wait. And come back. We got a warrant. Demand entry. If you don't, we're going to kick the door. I can't remember if we end up kicking the door or if they end up opening the door for us. But... We ended up arresting the knuckleheads. They drove the house around the street and they, by dragging the car and towing it and pulling it, it was leaking oil and it went right to their stinking house. So that was one. Uh, I forgot the other one. I gotta make notes on these when I. There was two that I wanted to do. And it was, oh, auto theft, kicking the door. So we're working. <laughs> this, this is where I kind of look pretty stupid. But uh, when you kick a door, and over time, you learn how to kick doors on what works better, etc. You know, if you use the shoulder on a hard door, you're going to hurt your shoulder. But sometimes, if you use your shoulder and back, you can break the door or weaken it by just pounding it a few times. You know, if you want to use your body, you don't want to use your body if you think the guy's in there armed and he's going to shoot through the door. But if you're chasing some punk who's probably not armed, you, you, you can use your body. People will say don't use it. Now, I always kept a sledgehammer in my car, had knock knock written on the edge of the sledgehammer, and <laughs> If we need to get in a door, I just go to the car and grab it. But a lot of times you're not by your car. If you're getting in a chase, you're chasing somebody and they run a house, you're farther away. So you don't have that. Now, you know, if you see something in the yard, you can pick it up and use it. But I use the sledgehammer works the best. I mean, they make all these fancy things and stuff. Get you a good sledgehammer. You hit that doorknob or you hit that lock, door's opening. So this guy, we, we, I forgot if we stopped him, we chased him. Somehow... This guy got into his trailer park, and he got in his trailer when we were kind of in hot pursuit behind him. And so I was going to kick the door. <laughs> well, let me give you a clue about doors. 
when doors open out and you're trying to kick them in, it's harder. If a door opens out, it's easier to kick it from the inside and kick it out because then you're only fighting the lock. But when you're kicking it in, you're, you're fighting the whole frame of the door. Well, most doors on most houses open inward, so it's easier to kick. You don't want a door opening outwards, especially in the winter places, because if it gets snowed and the snow piles up on the door, you can't open your door, you're trapped. So if doors open inward, you can always get out of your house. So most doors open inwards. Well, here's a tip. <laughs> on trailer parks <laughs> or trailers, all doors open out. <laughs> like this. They open out. So kicking a door this way is very difficult. And if you think about it, you're not even going to try to kick this door. You're going to get a pry bar and pry it this way and pry it out. Well, when you're chasing somebody and you're in a hurry, <laughs> dude ran in his trailer park, I'm hot on his heels, I come up behind him, I'm like, oh shit, and there's, there's these little steps because the trailer park was up, so there's like three steps and there's a couple cops with me <laughs> and they slow down, I'm like, oh hell no, that motherfucker just ran out of the door. <laughs> Boom! And I kick that as hard as I can. Sorry, Moki. I kick that as hard as I can, and I fly back about four feet off those steps, laying flat on my ass. And I'm like, what the hell? And the cops are laughing their ass off. They're like, dude, you never kick a trailer door from the outside. And I'm like, I was like, what a dumbass, man. I, I flattened myself. I flew back like freaking somebody shot me out of a slingshot because I was going to kick the shit out of that door. So here's a tip. You don't kick doors that move in. And anyway, if you do kick a door, a mule kick for a door that kicks in, you get much more power with a mule kick, several mule kicks, than with this kick. You just don't get as much force. A mule kick is a much more power you use your leg you get your body moving back and you can really get a lot of power kicking a door that way but uh you don't want to kick a door like that running at full speed and put a whole bunch of force in reverse because the laws of equal force <laughs> will kick in and your ass is flying backwards and you end up on the ground so those are uh, a couple of my little crazy incidents where i look like a dummy at least on one of them. We'll learn that there.